viewers, I'm the Fairly Odd Gamer. Even though I mostly review licensed games, I want to step away from these games for a while and focus more on other games. For example, I could review something from a video game series that I really love. Like a game from the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Sonic made his video game debut in 1991 on the Sega Genesis as competition against Nintendo's mascot, Mario. During that time, Nintendo released its own 16-bit console, an updated version of the already popular Nintendo Entertainment System called the Super NES. In the long run, Sega ended up dominating the video game market over Nintendo. Fast forward to 15 years later when Sonic was not doing very well and was considered by some fans as Sonic's worst year of all time. The most anticipated project, Sonic 06, became one of the most infamous projects. Remind you of anyone? They even released a port of Sonic the Hedgehog on the Game Boy Advance called Sonic Genesis, which also bombed. Don't believe me? Watch some Call Me Johnny's review. It's hilarious and I recommend you give it a watch. But a couple of games were considered good games during that year. One of which is a game that I personally enjoy, but other people seem to not like. That game is Sonic Riders. Released in February of the same year, Sonic Riders was another attempt at trying their hand at a racing game. Up until that point, Sega made two Sonic Drift games for the Game Gear, as well as Sonic R for the Sega Saturn. I purchased this game at a Best Buy that year, and I found myself enjoying this game. While it was difficult at first, I managed to get better at this game as time went on, almost completing the game 100%. So is this game still considered good during Sonic's 15th anniversary? Let's find out. After seeing the classic Sega and Sonic Team logos, we get an anime style intro that looks slightly better than Sonic X, accompanied by awesome techno music. Now this is where I talk about the game's story. And since I know the game's story by heart, I'll try to do the story in chronological order. So, let's get started. And try to keep up! In a mysterious blimp, we see a flock of birds known as the Babylon Rose, consisting of Jet the Hawk, Wade the Swallow, and Storm the Albatross, as they find a transparent cube which they think holds the key to the fabled Babylon Garden. However, Storm and Wade tell Jet that Eggman wants to see him because he heard a rumor that they have the key to the Babylon Garden. Eggman tells Jet that the key to the Babylon Garden is the Seven Chaos Emeralds, but Eggman also tells Jet about Sonic being the fastest creature on Earth. Hmm. He may be the fastest creature on the ground, but in the air, with me and my extreme gear, he's just a joke! <laughs> Meanwhile, in Future City, Sonic tells and Knuckles find a Chaos Emerald which the Babylon Rogues have apparently stolen. After Knuckles knocks Storm off his gear, Sonic goes after Jet as he shows off his extreme gear skills. Unfortunately, Jet attacks Sonic, therefore knocking him off his extreme gear. So, you're supposed to be the fastest thing alive? He's the fastest thing alive! Suddenly, Eggman appears the next day as he holds a racing tournament called the X-World Grand Prix. Not just a race, but a special race to see who's the fastest! Also, is it just me, or am I seeing the Sonic render from Sonic Heroes, as well as a screenshot of Sonic being chased by a whale in Sonic Adventure DX? It might be a coincidence, but it's something to point out. All contestants pay a simple entry fee of one Chaos Emerald, and the winner takes it all. Now, knowing the logic of every Sonic game, there's a total of seven Chaos Emeralds, so that means that only seven racers can participate in the tournament. Since we already know that the Babylon Rose, consisting of Storm, Wave, and Jet, are already participating, and that Team Sonic is about to participate in the tournament, then who is the seventh participant? After Sonic wins his race, Sonic and his friends enter Splash Canyon, still trying to figure out why Eggman is holding this tournament. Oh, hi, Amy. Wait, she's the seventh participant? Don't tell me you've signed up, too. Of course, it really looks exciting and fun. Why wouldn't I join? Because you have to be in every modern Sonic game, right? Okay, almost every modern Sonic game. Anyway, Tails finds out that the mark in one of the hoverboards was actually a symbol for Babylon. Babylon? Yes, the mark of the Babylon Rogues. And tells the backstory of the Babylon Rogues as seen in rock carvings, which look incredible by the way, as well as them being extreme gear specialists. Still, how can a plank like that just float? That's easy to explain. According to the cutter Joukowsky lift theorem, the control surface flow is balanced by the inverse kinetics of the- STOP! 
I know Knuckles is supposed to be angry here, but am I the only one who thinks he's being possessed at the same time? Anyway, Wave walks by and begins to diss tales about the extreme gear he made. Well, I never imagined anyone would enter the race with such a piece of junk. Oh, that girl! Who does she think she is? So Wave meets Amy as Knuckles starts in the storm in the lava factory, or egg factory as the gang calls it, and about to get into battle. Unfortunately, they end up destroying an innocent robot instead. But suddenly they hear the announcement that the next race is about to start. Uh, the track then! We'll settle this there! Looking forward to it! So Knuckles meets Storm in the race, and Storm runs back crying to his boss, believing that Knuckles cheated by using some special gear. What? Are you implying that you lost because of my gear? Accept it, buddy. It's not the board. Your skills just suck. Stop it! Anyway, Jet sends sure Storm out to find out what Eggman's secrets are. Hey, before you go, bring something back or don't return it all. Yes, sir. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jet begins to relax as Wave impatiently paces the ground waiting for Storm. Just sit down and relax. Chill, Wave. Really, Jet? How can you be so relaxed at a time like this? So Jack is tired of Wave's sped up speech as he spots Sonic from a distance and sneaks away. Hey Jet! You come back here! Right now! Actually, what was Wave saying in sped up gibberish? If you slow it down, you can understand what she's really saying. <laughs> of course! They never translated the slow down gibberish! It's just Wave saying random lines in Japanese from the earlier cutscenes. It's not a secret message or anything, it's just random lines from the game. Why do I even bother? Meanwhile, Sonic shows off his tricks to Tails and Knuckles as he gets interrupted by Jet. Not very impressive for someone of your reputation. After Jet hops off the tree, Tails decides to go out and uncover the secret of the extreme gears for them. Meanwhile, Storm returns to Jet and finds an entry to Eggman's diary about the story of a boy who received wings as a gift in order to rule the world. Not by a long shot. After Jet begins to daydream of having gold riches with a similar sound effect, <laughs> Let me quickly bring up something that needs to be brought up. The game's main composer is Tominori Sawada, who also did the sound effects for not only this game, but also some for Sonic Heroes. Maybe this was a sound effect he made for Sonic Heroes and wanted to use it for this game. Who knows? Anyway, Wave tells Jet to go back to the race, which is the last race of the tournament. And it's set here, in Sand Ruins. And what's it like, you may ask? Well, in the words of Anakin Skywalker, It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. With the race being so close, it looks like Sonic is about to win the race, right? Nope! Sonic's gear explodes, resulting in Jet winning the race. Actually, before I move on, let's talk about why Sonic's gear exploded. You see, Wave placed a bomb underneath Sonic's gear while expecting it in Splash Canyon. And after Tails beat Wave in the tournament, Wave was hiding behind a rock detonating the bomb as Sonic was inches away from winning the tournament. In other words... She's totally cheating! I mean... Cheating! So Jet gathers the Chaos Emeralds via the translucent box and uses the power of the Chaos Emeralds to summon the Babylon Garden from a sandy grave. Yoink! But Eggman steals the box and everyone chases after Eggman. Meanwhile, Omo Chow gives the news report in Metal City. We'll try and get more details right after this important announcement. Sonic then finds Eggman riding a scooter bike and Tails tosses to Sonic an updated version of his gear. Thinking ahead, Tails? Thanks! Sonic catches up to Jet and beats him in the race. Even without wings! I can still fly! Right? Well... I bet to differ on that. While that's going on, everyone else arrives in Babylon Garden as Knuckles and Storm prepare their battle. However, they're spotted by a robot and chases after them. Forget the red mutt! Let's go, Storm! Did she say red mutt? I think she means the robot, not you. Eggman holds Amy hostage and is about to uncover the secret, but Sonic attacks Eggman the same way he was attacked earlier by Jet. Is this like in Sonic Adventure 2 when he learned Chaos Control just by watching Shadow do it? Anyway, Sonic tosses the box to Jet, but he doesn't want it because, well, he lost. But they insist on taking it anyway because why? Treasure is treasure. So Sonic and his friends plan on leaving, but Amy returns in an angry manner to Sonic. How could you dive into Eggman knowing I was there? Meanwhile, the Babylon rogues open the door as Sonic and his friends hear a loud roar from afar, which is coming from inside the building. Sonic gets interested as they hover to the door and into the room. Look, Sonic, the door's 
close it! Darn! We're not gonna make it! Let's speed up! They make it to the room on time, as we see that the roaring was coming from the Babylon Guardian. Now, for those who don't know, the Babylon Guardian is known as Angelus, and is sworn to protect the treasure of Babylon from any intruders, even if the intruders are fellow Babylonians. After defeating the Guardian, he disintegrates into a treasure chest. However, the celebration falls short when Eggman catches them at gunpoint. It turns out that the treasure of Babylon is actually... A magic carpet? Leading to what some people would say after playing this game. I, I can't believe I just wasted my time for this piece of junk! So they leave Babylon Garden as they manage to head their way back home. You beat me fastest! For now! But I'll be back! Sonic the Hedgehog! And that concludes the story mode of Sonic Riders. On to the gameplay! To be blunt here, the controls can be a bit odd when you first play this game, but once you get used to the controls, you will eventually become better at this game. There's a tutorial video you can watch to learn the basic controls, but there's really nothing else except for the manual. Assuming you're not playing story mode, you start off by selecting a character and an extreme gear suitable for your character. You get a 5 second countdown and the race begins. However, you want to make sure that you exit the start gate the exact moment when the race starts. Otherwise, you get electrocuted and it delays your start time. Think about it as gassing out when you start your boost too soon in Mario Kart. Your characters are always equipped with a specific extreme gear, whether it's a hoverboard, skates, or a bike. Think of it as surfing, except you're on air instead of on water. Huh. Normally, whenever I mention surfing, that's when my companion Hux Gamer would run by and tell me because he is a surfing dog after all. And that must be him now. Come in! Did somebody say surfing? Oh, hey, Hux, what's up? Nothing much. I thought you said something about surfing, so maybe I take a moment to talk about my experience with surfing. Can you talk about it later, Hux? I'm a little busy right now. Whoa, sorry, dude. Didn't mean to interrupt. It's alright, Hux. You did nothing wrong. Oh, cool. Anyway, later, dude! Huh. Weird. Anyway, you finished three laps around a racetrack, and the goal is to finish in first place against seven other competitors, whether it's a different character or a miscellaneous Eggman robot. However, Eggman's voice is different in the game. Even though Mike Pollock provides the voice in the story cutscenes, his voice in the gameplay has Dean Bristow's recycled lines from Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> Your extreme gear uses air as its fuel source and gradually depletes as you continue racing. Most of the time you dash, which costs you a significant amount of air, and dashing into an opponent will attack and stun your opponent for a brief period of time. You also use air by making sharp turns or building up your air while making a jump, which allows you to perform tricks in the air. You're then ranked based on how many tricks you perform and if you're able to stick the landing. If your gear runs out of air, then you start running on foot, which ends up slowing you down. You can gain air by running into pit stops, or by successfully performing tricks whether from a ramp, or from an opponent's slipstream, or turbulence as the game calls it. You can also collect rings to purchase new gears from the shop, and collecting enough rings will not only level up your character, but will also extend the capacity of your air tank located on the bottom right corner of your screen. Let's talk about the story mode gameplay for a moment. You only need to finish within the top 3 places for the first two hero stages, but you have to finish first for the rest of the game. Except for the Babylon Guardian stage, but I'll get to that later. If you somehow fail a mission, then you have to start the stage again from the beginning. The stages look nice, and it has a different way of making each track more special, except that the stages look much different in the Babylon story. Metal City gives you the high energy of racing in a futuristic metropolis, while Night Chase is the gameplay version of the first cutscene from the hero story. Also, the cars look like they came from that arcade game Smashing Drive. Splash Canyon and Red Canyon have different textures as if they take place within a different time of day, and they also have slightly different track designs, but they're still very similar to each other. Egg Factory has elements of fire, while Ice Factory has, well, ice. But I do love the music for the stage, though. Green Cave and White Cave doesn't have much of a difference except for a color change. While the Metal City stages, Sand Ruins and Dark Desert mostly have the day and night differences. One thing I don't really like about Sand Ruins is when you're about to finish first, but it doesn't let you finish because of story purposes. But hey, that's only if you're playing the hero story in story mode. After that, there's the Babylon Garden and Sky Road. It's pretty much the same level, so let's just skip it. Anyway, let's talk about the music. It's amazing. As I mentioned before, the opening theme song Speed Riders has some elements of techno rock, though I don't understand why the singer sounds like he's being punched in the stomach. Another track I enjoy is Eggman's theme because it has the anticipation of Eggman arriving and showing up. It's actually pretty clever the more I think about it. Okay, now let's talk about the boss stage, Babylon Guardian. You have to defeat the Guardian three times in order to beat the level. However, you can't progress to the next lap until you damage the boss by boosting into this bulb-like lamp. Also, every time you damage the boss, the track transforms into a digital Tron-like track. 
So basically the Babylon Guardian is, and I quote the Sonic Wiki page, a holographic security system made by Babylonians. In addition to Babylon Guardian, there's Digital Dimension which you unlock after defeating the boss in story mode. In addition to the area that looks very much like the Guardian stage, you're also transferred to an angelic Babylon heaven. Other levels include Sega Carnival and Sega Illusion in celebration of Sonic's 15th anniversary. Games referenced include Super Monkey Ball, Nights in the Dreams, Space Channel 5, Choo Choo Rocket, Billy Hatcher, Crazy Taxi? Hey hey, come on over, have some fun with Crazy Sega! They're obtained by doing other game modes, which I'll explain very quickly. World Grand Prix has you race your opponents in all five stages from each story mode and come in first place in every race in order to receive a medallion. Mission mode has you perform tasks such as performing tricks for a crowd, collecting pieces of junk, grinding, flying, punching, the list goes on. There's nothing much except unlocking Eye Eye from Super Monkey Ball, Ula Love from Space Channel 5, and Knights from, well, Knights. Survival mode has two stages, race and battle. Race stages have you pick up an emerald and win by passing through the most gates with the emerald by you. The battle stage is pretty much battle mode. No more, no less. Finally, there's tag mode. Two players have the same air tank and you have to keep up with your partner, and you get shocked every time you're too far away from your partner. You win by having you and your partner get to the finish line before the other team. So after over 10 years, does Sonic Riders still hold off as a good game? Well, yes. I understand why people don't like this game as much as I do, but I personally think it's an okay game. It's not aged well, but it's something I could play to waste my time. The controls are decent, except for making sharp turns at some point. The music is okay, and the level design is pretty good. Don't believe me? Play the game and see for yourself. Now, I know that there are other games in the Sonic Riders series, but that's for another time. I'm the Fairly Odd Gamer, and I wish you good luck for the rest of your day or night, wherever you are. Take care, everyone. Look, my shadow just grew wings, but he's flying! Behold, Doctor, I can fly!